Ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. It's time to talk about faunus discrimination. Faunus are a species on remnant almost identical to humans except they possess a single animalistic trait. The mistreatment of the faunus have been one of the major driving forces for the show. Throughout the course of the series, we're told that the faunus are subjected to discrimination and hate. We're also told that they're being treated like second class citizens and that they've not received the equal treatment that they were promised after the Great War. In the very first chapter of the series, we are introduced to their plight. This Saturday's Fauna civil rights protest turned dark when members of the White Fang disrupted the ceremony. The White Fang, a violent terrorist organization fighting for the betterment of the faunus. The organization has affected the lives of some of our main characters and boy they don't mess around. We were setting fire to shops that refused to serve us. Ever since I was a child, I've watched family friends disappear, board members executed. Wow, civil rights. Terrorism, the discrimination of a minority group. This is some real heavy stuff. The writers must really want us to sympathize with the faunus. So of course, in order to accomplish this goal, over the course of five volumes of Ruby, real weight was given to this storyline by showing us, the viewers, faunus discrimination. Yeah. Did you see it? If you blinked, you might have missed it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Over the course of five volumes of Ruby, there's your fondest discrimination. A sign on the fucking wall. Friends, this just might be the show's greatest sin. You have a major storyline centered around the mistreatment of the faunus, and you don't show it to us? How does that happen? How? Well, clearly you don't watch the show, Vex, because we saw plenty of racist characters. Well, I know it's a lot easier to train an animal than a soldier. Yeah, I've seen racism in the show. I've also seen racism on the news. I would everybody. say, you know, everybody hates everybody, you know. It just yeah. depends on what you hate. You're an idiot! Let's not pretend that characters being racist is evidence of anything but their own stupidity and ignorance. It certainly doesn't speak to any form of legalized discrimination or segregation. They're not showing us anything. They're feeding us this storyline by way of exposition. But that's par for the course when it comes to these writers. By their own admission, Miles and Carrie struggle with show don't tell. But in regard to the fondness discrimination storyline, it comes with a bit of a twist. See, they tell us that the fondness have it rough. That we're still second class citizens. It must be hard to be a fondness. I know we haven't been treated fairly. While at the same time showing us that the whole thing is bullshit and the Faunus do not deserve your sympathy. It's all bullshit. I mean, just look at Sun. The kid walks around with his tail out, loud and proud, and nobody gives him any shit. He eats where he wants, he hangs where he wants, and has no fear of breaking the law. We're introduced to the character in Volume 1 and the shipman yells, You no good stowaway. I think it would have been better if he yelled, You no good Faunus. Now that would be just one random racist, but the fact that he feel comfortable enough to scream that out loud, that would have set the table for Fonda's discrimination better than anything Blake or Weiss said. Later, everyone finds out that Blake has been hiding the fact that she's a Fonda's, and no one seems to give a hoot. I mean, you told us all that Blake is secretly a fun-loving person whom we all admire and respect. <laughs> Are we supposed to believe that this whole thing is a farce? Hey Vex, you're forgetting something. The citizens of Vale are more open-minded. There's less discrimination in Vale and Vacuo compared to other kingdoms. Oh, honestly, Jan. So, you're telling me that Blake and Ospin are full of shit? Why do you wear that bow, Blake? May be willing to accept the faunus, Professor Ospin, but your species is not. True. Fine. How about we just head on over to Racist Land, aka Atlas? Ilya's got some information she'd like to share. They managed to enroll me in an Atlas prep school. But I had to follow a set of rules. No one could know I was a faunus. See, she's hinting at segregation here, but we don't get to see a flashback. I guess we just have to take her word for it. Why spends an entire volume up north and we don't even see a speck of faunus discrimination? We don't see the dust mines, we don't see anything. You know who was the last faunus we saw relative to Atlas? <laughs> Look, now you're bottom heavy too! There she is, folks, the face of the oppressed. Ilya should have enrolled in the same prep school Neon did. Oh my gosh, you guys were super crazy awesome! We should def 
definitely party together sometime. Partying with the humans in Atlas, woohoo! Guys, I know referencing Neon's personality and demeanor is a bit of a nitpick, but I'm only mentioning it to show you that they've passed on any and every opportunity to show us that the Faunus are oppressed in this world. Why are we supposed to care? Because the characters talk about it? Seeing is believing. I haven't seen any evidence that the Faunus are oppressed. Show me the inequality. What about Mistral, you say? Well, that's the kingdom where we saw the racist guy and his little sign. The racist dude we're supposed to feel for it in the scene? That idiot. Clearly this place is strong with discrimination. I mean it's so bad that the headmaster of the local Huntsman Academy is a fucking faunus. <laughs> Crow! Uh, uh, for crying out loud, uh, nearly scared uh, me half to death! Guys, I'm laughing to stop myself from slamming my head into my laptop. I mean what is this? Why the hell would you make him a faunus? Aren't they supposed to be oppressed? That doesn't even make any sense! Hey, but vexed. Wasn't it Ospin who appointed Lionheart the headmaster of Haven Academy? Well, hate to break it to you, but we don't know who the hell hired Leo. 80 years ago, the Great War came to an end, and Ospin's predecessor, the King of Vale, founded the Huntsman Academies and placed his most trusted followers in command of each kingdom's school. He appointed his trusted followers 80 years ago. Seeing as Leo is a middle-aged man and not over 100 years old, we don't know who the hell appointed him. We do know that in present day, every kingdom's governing council appears to have influence over the position of headmaster. But after this festival comes to a close, we are going to have a serious discussion regarding your position at Beacon Academy. I think it's much safer to assume that the Mistral Council appointed Leo and Ospin brought him into his inner circle around the same time he brought in Ironwood. You're here because Ospin wanted you here. He made you a part of this inner circle and opened your eyes to the real fight that's in front of us. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter how you slice it, the shit just doesn't fit. Leo, a faunus, is sitting on the Mistral Council while this shit is going on? Legalized discrimination? We the citizens don't want you eating in our restaurants, but please, please teach our best and brightest warriors. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. It means as soon as I can convince the rest of the council that I need huntsmen more than they do. What's that, Leo? You have influence? You mean they actually listen to you? And you're not trying to do anything about this shit? Folks, this whole thing is nonsensical. And I haven't even gotten to the best part. The Kingdom of Mistral is so racist that an army of Faunus from a different territory were allowed to march through the streets with shields and batons. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? Treat on the stage, it is the genius minds behind Ruby. This whole thing is unbelievably frustrating. Look at Milf Cat hanging with the Mistral police. Does it look like she's worried about getting shot by the popos? I mean, come on, man. This whole fondness discrimination slash white fang storyline has been a big miss. I don't care because the writers never got me invested in it. I can't even begin to empathize with Blake or the white fang members if you never show me any oppression, especially when everything you do show me contradicts it. It saddens me because they had plenty of time to show us something and they refused. Perhaps they should just scrap the whole thing now. It looks like Volume 5 may have brought the storyline to a close. Perhaps it's time for a new brotherhood. A new family for Faunus truly working towards a better world. Oh, shut up. My question for you all is, do you still care to see Faunus discrimination at this point? I mean, we are going to Atlas. There's some opportunities there. I, for one, am sick and tired of being told how bad they have it. There's the humans that still hate the Faunus, and there's the others who stand by and let the hate happen! Show it to me or shut up. So does anybody know why the Faunus World of Remnant does not mention the Faunus War? Did they forget? Was it retconned? Or maybe, just maybe, they just don't give a shit. The world may never know. Oh, how I love this fandom. Hey guys, um, it looks like I'm gonna be coming up on 5,000 subscribers soon, which sounds kind of weird saying that out loud. Thank you to all the recent subscribers, which is pretty much everyone. I think I'll end up doing something generic when I hit 5,000, maybe like a Q&A, something generic like all the YouTubers do. I'm lame. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. 
Pretty soon I'm gonna start taking suggestions from you guys when it comes to videos. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and I will see you in the comment section.